the bitterness which destroyed Percy Williams somehow never tainted the athlete who was destined to take his Olympic 100 meters title in the Los Angeles Games of 1932. Yet if ever a man had reason for bitterness, then that man was Eddie Tolan. In the course of a short and dazzling career, Tolan fought poverty, unemployment, color prejudice, and persistent injury. That list of enemies would have discouraged the bravest competitor, but there was one other factor which was beyond his control. When the gods designed Olympic sprint champions, the men they had in mind were not five feet four and a half inches tall. Tolan set out to show that the gods could make one magnificent exception. Eddie Tolan's story is in the classic tradition of black American sprinters. Born into a poor southern family which was forced to move north in search of work, he spent his early years convinced that his future lay on the football field. But after ripping knee ligaments during a junior game, surgery left him with a limp and a large elasticated bandage to add to his other disadvantages. After a glittering high school running career, he was awarded a scholarship to the University of Michigan, which had produced Olympic sprint champions Archie Hahn and Ralph Craig. There were just two black athletes on the Michigan team. Integration was still a distant dream, and they suffered all the indignities of second-class citizens. Eddie was angry and humiliated, but he channeled his feelings into his racing performances and equaled the world 100 yards record. It was a turning point in his career. The Los Angeles Olympics would be another. These games were America's rebuke to the recession. They attracted one and a quarter million spectators, 2,000 athletes, and the enthralled attention of the whole world. When the teams marched into the Los Angeles Coliseum, Tolan was rated America's second finest sprinter. Pride of place went to the man who had won both sprints in the Olympic trials, the tall and powerful Ralph Metcalf from Milwaukee. The duels between Metcalf and Tolan would prove to be the most enduring memory of these games of 32. Tolan, with his quick, urgent action, scampered through to the final. Metcalf, with his devouring stride, simply cantered through. The first American victory since 1920 was taking shape. But which American would be victorious? On August the 1st, 1932, the cast assembled for one of the most controversial Olympic sprint finals. The three most fancied runners were Tolan, Metcalf, and their chief challenger, Jonath of Germany. Joubert of South Africa, the third American, George Simpson, and Yoshioka of Japan made up the field. Yoshioka took the early lead. At 50 meters, Tolan began to roll. Then, inevitably, Metcalf's giant stride brought him level. As they hit the tape, not a person in that crowded coliseum could separate them. Tolan waited and worried. Then they announced the verdict. Winner, Tolan. 10.3 seconds, equaling the world record. Second, Metcalf, same time. To the day he died, almost half a century later, Congressman Ralph Metcalf was convinced he had not lost that race. He insisted it should have been a dead heat. But even Metcalf could not grudge Eddie Tolan the first piece of real luck that life had brought him. Yet even Metcalf's charity was strained by the events of the 200 meters two days later. On the face of it, Tolan took an unexpected victory with some ease, returning 21.2 seconds for a new world record. But it was later revealed that Metcalf had dug his starting holes in the wrong place, giving his rivals an advantage of some four feet. He worked wonders to finish third behind Tolan and Simpson, and later he was offered a rerun. He declined. America had gained a clean sweep, and the generous Metcalf would not put that result at risk. As the only American track athlete to win two gold medals, Eddie Tolan imagined that life might now become a little easier. Back home, only his mother's pitiful wages were keeping the family from starvation. And as Detroit prepared a hero's reception for Eddie, the governor of Michigan promised to do something to ease the agony. But those promises were never kept. Eddie grew used to the disappointments. His great ambition was to become a doctor, and in his desperation to pay his way through medical school, he accepted an offer to tour the vaudeville circuit, telling stories about the Olympics for $1,500 a week. Sadly, the money never came. The show closed after just one week. The medical career was just another hopeless dream. After an abortive flirtation with professional sprinting, which brought a few more trophies but little cash, the city eventually gave him a mundane job as a filing clerk. More mundane jobs followed. He ran a petrol station, sold burial insurance, and finally became a supply teacher in Detroit. 
He died after a heart attack in 1967 at the age of 57. The city named a playing field in his memory, but by then his achievements had faded into history. Yet the deeds of Eddie Tolan had paved the way for a long and dazzling line of black sprinters, and the most famous of them all was already moving towards centre stage.